Hello, my name is Martin Andrews and I'm an architect, educator and associate dean at the University of Portsmouth in the UK. The title of my presentation today is Shining Light, a case study analysis of a tutor training program for architect educators at the University of East London, 1996 to circa 2002. Within higher education, or HE, academics are the central part of the system. They have a substantial impact on the students that they teach in terms of performance and achievement. For an educator to be knowledgeable, effective and inspiring in this environment, academics must be given opportunities to develop their teaching practice, master their subject area and understand the various needs of the cohorts that they are working with. According to recent reports released by the Architects Registration Board, or ARB, and the Royal Institute of British Architects, or RIBA, architecture education needs to be revised. The education of future architects is now a point of focus for schools of architecture in the UK because the professional bodies have called for a reappraisal of how students are trained. As part of the revisions, this author believes it is important to consider support for architect educators because architecture-specific tutor training does not currently exist in the UK and may be an important component of any restructured education programme. Row Bottom and Weaver et al have written about the need for architects to receive training before leaving practice and entering education as tutors. This situation remains largely unchanged in the UK and international schools of architecture. For support for all educators, including architect educators, in HE can now be found in the form of the Advanced HE Higher Education Academy Fellowship Programme, which utilises a self-reflective approach to develop an individual's teaching practice. However, the Higher Education Academy programme helps applicants to understand teaching practice in a broad and general sense and does not consider the discipline-specific needs of architect educators who are required to tutor in the design studios or present in the lecture rooms of UK schools of architecture. When the professional bodies of architecture, the ARB and RIBA, contemplate the future of architecture education, one question they might consider is, what format could a tutor training programme for architect educators take? For this reason, it would be useful to look at any previous examples that exist as a means of learning from previous precedents and exemplars. Following a thorough investigation into the tutor training of architect educators, only one such programme was discovered. First mention of this tutor training programme, or TTP, can be found in a paper authored and presented by Weaver in 1997. Using the methodology of case study research, this presentation analyses and contextualises this programme for architect educators, which was formed in the summer academic term of 1996 at the University of East London School of Architecture. The programme was conceived and coordinated in a transdisciplinary way by three UEL colleagues, Mary Caddick, artist, art therapist, HE educator and assistant director of the Atelier Principal in Teaching Project, Dave O'Reilly, Head of Research in Educational Development, and Nick Weaver, Architect and Deputy Head of the School of Architecture. Lasting until approximately 2002, the UEL programme taught architect educators how to teach architecture. To the author's knowledge, this was the first and last programme for architect educators in the UK. The information gathered during the collection and analysis stages of this research project have been used to answer the following research questions. One, how did the UEL School of Architecture programme come about? Two, why is the UEL School of Architecture programme atypical, unique and special in architecture education? Materials and methods. Archival databases were searched, physical and online documents were reviewed, and original videotape recordings were obtained about the UEL programme. Five papers about the programme, published as chapters in post-conference books, were discovered and were used to form the skeletal backbone of this research project. Other documents referred to, including books, journal articles and websites, to further contextualise the programme within the wider setting of architecture education and higher education. The two surviving staff members of the UEL programme were interviewed to gain a first-hand understanding of the course. Prior to the interviews taking place, 
the author undertook a full ethics review and approval was gained. The interview participants included the former deputy head of the UEL School of Architecture, Nick Weaver, who implemented the programme, and Mary Caddick, whose teacher practitioner experiences and expertise guided the formation and coordination of the programme. Each of the participants were interviewed once on Zoom for a period of 90 minutes. Case study research, as defined by Stake and Harrison, was the methodology chosen to analyse and contextualise the programme. Key terms and themes emerged from the analysis of the five papers and the semi-structured interviews which the author set into the wider context of architecture education and HE in order to make greater sense of the data. The author took a rigorous and systematic approach to this research in terms of data analysis. Firstly, a research framework was used for this presentation, modelled on the example presented by Ebnir Yamini and Moghadam. Secondly, pattern matching by Gray and Yin was used, where patterns were identified in studies carried out with a similar theme to the one being investigated here. Thirdly, theory triangulation by Yin and Swanborn was adopted, which involved taking on a variety of perspectives to confirm the results through multiple sources of evidence. Fourthly, in order to make the research replicable, the author adapted the protocol process suggested by Yin. This protocol organised the small steps that were taken during the collection, analysis and writing up stages of the project. This section of the presentation analyses and discusses data that inductively emerged from the five post-conference chapters and the two semi-structured interviews in relation to the research questions. Two of the most important coding categories, Hefke and Tavistock Clinic, emerged from the data analysis. Each of these prominent coding categories can be used to answer the research questions stated above. Hefke. The coding category Hefke, or the Higher Education Funding Council for England and Wales, and associate discourse strands can be used to answer the first research question, how did the UEL School of Architecture programme come about? O'Reilly et al. state that the UEL School of Architecture was awarded three years of funding from 1996 to 1999 from the Hefke Fund for the Development of Teaching and Learning, or FDTL, to run the Atelier Principal in Teaching project. In the semi-structured interview with Weaver, he confirmed that UEL received quarter of a million pounds from the Hefke FDTL to run the Atelier Principal in Teaching project. A stipulation of the funding was that it needed to be used to disseminate excellent teaching practices that had been developed within the UEL architecture department. This dissemination took the form of presentations at UK and international conferences, publication of chapters in post-conference books, the production of three films and annual yearbooks which contextualised and recorded the learning and teaching outputs produced by students and staff from the cross the UEL School of Architecture. Of the 10 deliverables and outcomes agreed for the UEL project, the final bullet point required colleagues to establish a tutor training course for full and part-time teachers in higher education. Importantly, the funding provided financial resources to create and staff the programme. During the interview with Weaver, he suggested we chose Mary. It turned out she'd done this course at the TAVI on infant observation, and so suddenly I had somebody who knew a way of training people. I had the money to pay her to do this and do whatever else was necessary to fund the course. Weaver continues, we chose Mary, and she wasn't an architect, she was a painter, and she'd done an art education, and it turned out she'd done this course at the TAVI on infant observation, and so suddenly I had somebody who knew a way of training people which we realised we could graft onto the unit system, a traditional way of teaching studio design to students in schools of architecture. The data presented above can be used to answer the first research question of this presentation in a straightforward manner. The UEL programme came about because Weaver was invited to bid for and was awarded a substantial financial contribution from the Hefke FDTL. It can be argued that without this funding, the programme would not have existed. The short-lived nature of the programme, which concluded approximately one or two years after the FDTL funding window closed, hints at this. 
Weaver stated during his interview at the conclusion of the FDTL project that funding was requested from senior management at UEL to continue the programme. However, no support was provided to finance a continuation of the course. This information helps to confirm how vitally important the FDTL seed money was to establish and run the programme. The financial contribution from Hefke allowed for the appointment of an assistant director of the Atelier Principal in Teaching project and, without the Hefke funding, CADIC would not have been employed to develop her unique approach of training architect educators how to teach. The Tavistock Clinic is a national health service institution that has historically specialised in psychoanalytical observational courses. The coding category Tavistock Clinic can be used to answer the second research question. Why is the UEL School of Architecture programme atypical, unique and special in architecture education? Tavistock is mentioned in three of the five chapters written about the UEL programme. However, Tavistock, in Caddick's own voice, is most prevalent in the chapter that she wrote with her UEL colleague O'Reilly. The coding categories and discourse strands associated with the Tavistock Clinic appear extensively within the text of that particular publication. Caddick trained in 3D design at an undergraduate level, went on to be a fine art professional, obtained an art therapy postgraduate diploma, graduated with an MA from the Tavistock Institute before taking up her post as manager of the UEL programme. Caddick stated that she had made the decision to study at the TAVI in order to gain a deeper base for the creative process workshops that I run. During her interview, Caddick reiterated that she was not an architect nor an architect educator, but she had been involved in teaching creative subjects for many years before she worked with O'Reilly and Weaver to set up the programme. Similarly, the Tavistock Clinic was not linked to architectural education. In stark contrast, theory, practice and training at the Tavistock Clinic focuses on infant observation, child psychotherapy and family therapy. Caddick confirms that she brought her own experiences of psychoanalytical observation of non-adult communities to bear on the programme, a method that is uncommon in architecture education. This is evidenced by the identification of coding categories and discourse strands relating to family. Caddick explains in another book chapter, written jointly with O'Reilly in 2002, that the Tavistock Clinic trains students to use psychoanalytical techniques to observe children and their relatives in domestic settings. Caddick goes on to compare the structure and hierarchy of families in the home with how architecture students worked with their academic tutors in the architecture studios at UEL. Observation, Reflection, Practice when Caddick had been a student at the Tavistock Clinic undergoing her training, she had learned firsthand about the importance of developing the skills of observation and reflection to understand the context of a setting. As a student, Caddick observed the setting of the family home. As the assistant director of the UEL programme, she encouraged the trainee architect educators to observe and reflect upon the setting of the design studio as a means to understand, but also improve upon the teaching practices that they witnessed. During the semi-structured interview with Weaver, he spoke of the technology of the UEL programme being a seminar where you reflected on what the participants had seen in their individual experiences. It seemed a brilliant invention. These seminars, which lasted for a morning each week during term time for one academic cycle, provided the tutees with opportunities to discuss what they had witnessed while working in their units. So everybody got a chance to speak. There was a thorough reflection on the reflections. Weaver went on to describe the importance of observation in the training of the student teachers. They started as observers in the unit and we had a strict thing. They weren't to speak for the first term, they were just to look, then gradually they were allowed to take part. This pattern of observation, reflection took place for the first two terms of the year, with the third and final term providing the trainee tutors with opportunities to engage more fully with the architecture students in their units. Building on Weaver's comments about the technology of the UEL programme, Caddick confirmed, I was basing it, the pedagogy of the programme, very much on my fantastic training at Tavistock Clinic. I drew hugely on my training because I thought it was such an impressive way to learn. Caddick went on to state, I was teaching them as I was taught, to write down without interpretation what they felt they saw and heard, what did the tutor do, what did the student do, 
Put simply, what I took from my Tavistock training was this incredible focus on observation and reflection and practice. The operation of the programme, which provided trainee architect educators with opportunities to carry out exercises in observation, reflection, practice, emerges strongly from an analysis of the data. Reflecting on one's own teaching practice is a common method within UK higher education. However, quiet observation and reflection of the design studio by tutors is unique to the UEL programme. The data presented above can be used to answer the second research question of this presentation. The UEL programme is atypical, unique and special in architecture education because of Caddick and her decision to develop a course based upon a method of teaching modelled on the Tavistock Clinic pedagogy, observation, reflection and practice. Discussion, a new transdisciplinary approach for architecture education. The UEL programme, guided by Caddick, chose to teach the trainee architect educators in a way that was atypical in architectural education. Typically, new tutors in UK schools of architecture are paired with experienced tutors in an academic design studio. Weaver et al. observed at UEL that the new inexperienced teacher was firstly inducted by twinning, with a more experienced teacher who, in an informal way, acted as a mentor. The use of mentoring or pupillage is common and familiar in the training of architects and dates back to the 18th century. That this approach was adopted for the training of architect educators is not surprising. In contrast to how tutors within architectural education have been traditionally trained, Caddick chose to adapt and enhance the existing model of mentoring by utilising a method of observation reflection practice. In this way, new tutors who studied at the UEL programme were able to observe the goings-on of the design studio and shadow a more experienced colleague. The ultimate goal of the programme was to encourage the tutor trainees to co-create a studio design project, but only after they had built up their own tutoring experience and skills through a process of observing, reflective writing and presenting their findings. The UEL programme can be described as being unique in architecture education as there is a general lack of architecture specific training available for new and existing tutors. Furthermore, the UEL programme was modelled on the pedagogic approaches of the Tavistock Clinic. To the author's knowledge, this is the first course to formally train architect educators how to teach using observation reflection practice modelled on the methods of delivery utilised by the Tavistock Clinic. The UEL programme can also be described as being special. An analysis of the data chosen for this presentation has clearly indicated that the methods used to instruct the trainee tutors were chosen by Caddick and based on the approaches developed at the Tavistock Clinic. These methods were based on Caddick's own personal experiences of being educated at the Tavistock Clinic and her own professional expertise developed while teaching students located within the creative arts. Without the very particular and specific insights and inputs of Caddick, the UEL programme would have been a very different course. The course is special because there are no comparisons that can be made to the programme that have existed in architecture education. Architecture education is simply not taught using the approaches conceptualised and developed by Caddick at UEL. This presentation has argued that Caddick, O'Reilly and Weaver created a programme for architect educators that adopted an atypical and transdisciplinary approach to learning and teaching in architecture education and that their methods remain unique and special. Importantly, the findings of this presentation have shined a light on the under-researched UEL programme as a means to better understand the course. Additionally, some of the data and findings that have been revealed as part of this investigation could be used by the professional bodies that support UK architecture education to better understand what a programme for architect educators might look like in the future. As part of the revisions being investigated by the ARB and RIBA, this author believes it is important to consider support for architect educators because architecture-specific tutor training does not currently exist in the UK. In any discipline of HE teaching, creative confidence enables tutors to respond and adapt to the complex needs of students. This confidence enables educators to take risks, to process the failures as well as successes, and to learn and try again. Colleagues who teach in architecture education, but also educators who work in HE subject areas more widely, form an essential bridge between academia and practice. However, 
providing discipline-specific training and support is challenging due to limited budgets and time pressures. Following a straightforward framework focused on observation and reflection as part of a community of practice could be a way to satisfy some of the specific professional development needs of tutors in UK architecture education and more broadly across UK and international higher education to ensure that colleagues are able to support the multifaceted learning needs of their students. Thank you for listening today. If you'd like to read through the references that I have used for this presentation, please use this QR code. If you would like to ask me questions about my presentation, please contact me by email at martin.andrews at port.ac.uk.